Welcome back to the woods of central Scotland guys Heading for another overnighter tonight Heading to the bushcraft camp Got a few plans to do there today It's a bit late in the day though It's half two, not ideal But hopefully we'll still have a bit of time to do some stuff So I'll catch you in a bit Guys, I've arrived at the camp now. I'm just gonna have a look around, see how she's known. So the roof's not looking too hot, but we're not gonna have time to tackle the roof today. Now the plan today is I want to finish this fire reflector wall because it just looks terrible. I just haven't got around to it at all. And also uh, I'm wanting to build a, a permanent crane type pot hanger type thingy uh, that I can just put over here over here and uh, yeah just leave it there so I'll show you what I mean I've actually came quite prepared today you guys will get a laugh at this so here you go <laughs> I, I've made a line drawing of what I had in my head that I want to do so upright pole uh, carve a, a section out of the wood there, a Y branch so two Y branches uh, lash the two here together and the idea behind this is if we have this uh, carved out section on this upright pole we can lash it here on the end of this Y branch and you know we can use it as a crane and we can swing it out of the way and swing it in when we want to use it over here, I might change this but over here we just have a bit of paracord or a bit of cordage uh, a pot hook and the pot Yeah, so I drew that the other day The plan is to Give this a bash today, so wish me luck So I found a suitable dead standing tree guys I've got a couple of new pieces of gear I want to share with you today So you may get a laugh at this also What do you think of this? One of these crappy aluminium saws you would buy at your local hardware store or whatever So, as much as I like the Laplander guys uh, I wanted a bigger saw to make life easier for cutting larger pieces of wood Especially for doing bushcraft projects and winter camping and stuff like that So what's your thoughts on this? So, we all know the Boreal 21 exists, it's a thing you know they're popular with certain guys, but man, the Boreal 21's like 70 bucks. This thing costs like 12 bucks. It's not very bushcrafty, but hey, it does the job. I've used it a couple of times, it's pretty good. So yeah, the Boreal 21, cool looking saw, folds away obviously, which is pretty handy. But it's like 70 quid, and this is uh, 12 quid. It doesn't fold away, but it slips down the back of my pack, no problem. It's uh, it's not too tall that it's going to stick out my bag, and I've got a 50 litre bag, so it fits in there fine, basically in the back. So it doesn't matter to me that it doesn't fold down. I mean, uh, guys, we get hung up on gear so much, don't we? I'm not going to criticise people that like gear, but we spend. Probably entirely too much time worrying about gear uh, Knives especially I own about 24 different knives, multi-tools and saws now So I'm no exception to everyone else that likes their tools But you know, I would like a, a fancy fold-away saw that costs 70 bucks But how do I justify it? What's your thoughts? I mean, that costs 12 bucks does the exact same job, arguably the exact same job and uh, not to be nitpicky but the Boreal 21 is what, 500 grams? this stupid thing is 490 grams so it does the same job it's a fraction of the price and it weighs slightly less <laughs> I don't know I'll leave it up to you <laughs> You 
also do that with it. Just a bit handy. That's strong enough to knock off small branches. Too close to the camera. Shit! So we got wood, got wood. I'm just gonna cut it the size I need. Look at the saw go, guys. Very good. Not bad. Okay guys, I've cut a bit of wood to the size I think I need. So the plan now is to remove the material as in the drawing. So what I'm thinking is We remove this material here, so we remove what an inch, half, an inch and a half. Only needs to be wide enough for us to fit our Y branch in it, really. So I'm going to have to try and do this as quick as I can because I don't have as much day daytime left as I hoped. Yeah, so I'll just get the saw and I'll just try and cut this section out. as I can. I can also, I can also uh, tidy it up later with my knife if I need. Granted the back of Laplander would have been easier to do this job but we'll manage. Okay, it's probably going to take a while to tighten. So this is the other piece of gear I was talking about, guys. The... Get over here! The Tarava Jukari Pico. How many of you guys have probably seen these before? No doubt. So I thought I'd give one a try myself. This is the 140 version. And, uh, Well, I'm going to share my thoughts more on it another time. Uh, I really need to get on with this task at the moment. So yeah, we'll maybe discuss it later on tonight if we get time. So I'm just going to try and remove this section of wood here. And this knife is doing a, a grand job at it. Eh, uh, this might take a while. Maybe I'd be better using a hatchet or maybe baton in then with the knife instead. I reckon uh, we'll do it guys, but it might take a while.
So I'm just using the saw and my Leatherman just to make this finer task a bit easier and then that big saw. I'm just removing the material, working my way round because we're wanting the finished result to be round. So we're definitely getting there. But bushcraft ain't easy, and bushcraft ain't quick. So the next challenge will be finding a nice Y branch, or a couple of Y branches. Find a couple of Y branches, cut them down, and then, I don't know, I reckon this project might take an hour, hour and a half. Maybe less, maybe more. But this is the first time me trying this guys. This style. It's just an idea I had in my head. And I, I draw I drew the idea down. But I do have a video dedicated to pot hangers. And there'll be a link. You can click on it. So we do discuss that, the crane style pot hanger in that video, but nothing like this, this is quite different. So I was actually struggling to fit the Ducari Puko in there, just because it's so big. So I'm just doing some finishing touches with a good old sidekick, Leatherman. Yeah, so just really tidying it up now. What I think I might do is finish the pot hanger and then if I've got time later tonight when it's dark by the fire I can do some more work on it and clean it up a wee bit and make it look a bit better. But if I can just get it functioning and just make sure that it actually does function then we can do finishing touches later. Definitely a lot slower than the hands with the Leatherman, but I always bring it. I love my Leatherman. A lot of people debate about Leatherman and Swiss Army knife, and uh, I don't know. I just keep it simple. I carry both. I don't get involved in the debate. Sometimes I like. Having the uh, the pliers for stuff around camp, you know, if you drop your grill in the fire and you don't want to burn your hands off, you can pick it up with that. You can pick up your pot lid with it if your pot lid's hot. But also from a survival perspective, I like having the Leatherman because you can use it to salvage gear. Leatherman's handy for loads of different stuff. So what I'm going to do is just chamfer the end of this because we're going to be batoning it into the ground. So I'm going to minimise the splitting of the wood. But yeah, I'm just doing this while I'm here. But we're pretty much finished the first step though guys. So in the world of Morsk Kohansk, Kohansky survival, this is called a reduction, I believe, and it's from the, the, the tri-stick. 
So have you ever had a tri-stick? When I first had a tri-stick I had no idea what the hell it was. But it's essentially a, a stick and you, you, you practice your knife skills on it and you create different notches and, uh, and things on the wood. And so this one is called a reduction. So that should work, hopefully. Alright guys, so I've got the... I've uh, got a spike on one end, hammered in the ground. So the plan now is... Found two Y branches. So one Y branch goes in there. And another one goes in there like that. So I'll lash that one here. Lash that at the back here. And I think this might actually work. So guys, this is what I had in my head. So that by branch would go through that reduction. And what I've done is a Canadian jab knot and I finished it with a clove hitch over here. So the idea is now that I can swing that around out of the way and I don't have to worry about it falling off. Just a wee bit of extra security. All I need to do now is do the last bit here. So guys, we're pretty much done. So the last bit was lashing these two Y branches together. So that was probably the most awkward part, to be honest. Because you've got to try and kind of hold them at the same time and then keep the tension as you wrap it all the way around. So it's basically a round lashing guys, okay, so you start with a clove fetch and then you just wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it and end of a clove fetch over here. So that's now three of these swings all the way around. So all I need to do now is put a V notch here. Come on camera, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. There we go. V notch, right? V notch. A bit of paracord and then uh, carve a wee pot hanger and then we should be rocking and rolling with this one. Pretty pleased with that. How's the thing guys? Alright guys, I found another Y branch and I cut it down into a pot hanger. So I'm just going to make the, the beak notch now to hang the, the pot on. I'm just going to show you how I do this. Uh, I've probably showed you this before but I'll show you again. So if you've got a, a, the small snot saw on your Leatherman on your, or your Swiss Army knife, I prefer to use that for the finer work like making notches. And I'll show you what I mean. So to make the beak notch, what you sometimes see guys doing is they'll put their knife like that and they'll baton down and make an X in the wood. But the way I like to do it, is with the saw. So the saws on your Leathermans and your Swiss Army knives are good for this. So saw into the wood, about a quarter to one third of the way in, and turn it round, and then make that X. And 
and then turn around and do it again if you need to. Okay, so that's what you're looking at. There's your X. One line that, that way, one line going that way. And then all you need to do is take your knife and carve away that material. So guys, that's what you're looking for. You see we've got quite a pronounced peak shape in here. Now and that's going to hold our paracord easily. Well guys, I think we're done. So I did the V-notch, got a clove hitch on there. I've got an adjustable knot to raise and lower the pot. We've got our beak notch, our pot hook in the pot and then when we're done I can just hook that over there like that and just swing it completely out of the way that's so cool I'm pretty pleased with that it's pretty sturdy sturdy enough you probably hang two pots on it, you probably hang another one here. So how do you guys think I did? Not the best camera angle. Don't think the camera is doing it justice in this light, it's not great. But I believe I have rough, roughly actualised what was in my head. Or head. Well guys, that pot hanger worked out well. Thank God for all that work. It was quite a lot of work and uh, yeah, it was worth it, it seems so. The nights are getting longer now, so I'm going to get a fire on pretty soon. Hopefully we'll be able to eat my dinner while it's still daylight. That'll be good. I'm going to try out the pot hanger. I've collected a decent amount of wood so far. But I've not even got the hammock up yet, because I've just been so busy, so I better get on with that. Right, I finally got the hammock up, guys. Uh, I've been so busy today. I totally forgot to get around to it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I've decided to put a pole at the front to raise the front end of the tarp so that I can hopefully get a view of the fire tonight when I'm in bed. Yeah, so the fire will be over there. So, stoke the fire up before I go to bed. Let me get a wee view of it. What I did here was just carve the reduction on the end of that stick. Put the loop through it. And then I guide it out over here. Oh well, there you go guys, we've got the soup on now. Paul Hanger's working out fine. Check out this cool little thing I discovered, guys, while checking my pot. So this spark fits in here perfectly like that. And I can just check my pot, put the lid back on. Let's have a look and see what's for dinner tonight then, guys. So I've brought the zebra pot tonight, and I've got it absolutely jam-packed with goodies. So I'll have a roll and uh, see about that thing. Mmm, piece of candy. Mmm, piece of candy. I've got some veg. Some pistachios. I'm so hungry. Mmm, piece of candy. A potato. A second potato. 
Mm, a piece of candy. Right off. Stock cube. Look at the colour of my hands. Wow. Mm, piece of candy. So, apart from candy, yeah, more candy. I'm making soup tonight. I'll have that roll of it. Mm, piece of candy. Mm, piece of candy. Well, guys, I need to head off. Got plans today, so I can't hang around this morning. But I hope you enjoyed joining me in a little trip last night. Lots of bushcraft happening. So I hope to see you in the next video. Take it easy guys. Oh, camera. My camera. I wonder how many YouTubers I've left their cameras in the woods, eh? See you later guys. <laughs>